everybody. It's Corey at More Guitars and More Music in Evansville, Indiana. Welcome to another episode of A Little Guy with a Big Guitar. Today, we're talking overdrives. But we are not talking about bass overdrives. But we're talking about overdrives on bass. But they're not bass overdrives. But we're putting them on bass. I know, you're confused. I'm confused. It's okay, we're gonna get through this. One thing I've never subscribed to is you shouldn't use effects on bass and you should only use effects designed for bass on bass. Phooey. Absolute phooey. Uh, I've discovered uh, a, several pedals uh, that are on my board uh, just out of happenstance. Of course, working in the guitar shop, we've got lots of different manufacturers, lots of different pedals, so I get to hear and try some things. And sometimes customers come to me with a complete curveball of a question. So one day a local player uh, comes in and says, hey, Corey, I want an overdrive for my bass, but I don't want a bass overdrive. Wow. That really sent my mind spinning. Can we do that? Should we do that? Will we do that? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, we tried out a few. We found one that worked particularly well. Um, and let me tell you why I think they worked well. Certain overdrives, especially uh, guitar overdrives, tend to have a mid-range hump. They add a little bit more mid-range to them. When you add them to a bass guitar, those frequencies are in the top end of, of your bass guitar as far as the frequencies that it produces. So a lot of times, the, the bass in your signal, what makes your bass sound warm, what makes it sound thick, what makes it sound good, gets washed out by overdrive. Uh, so there are a few criteria for overdrives that I'm looking for. Uh, I'm looking for something with either a blend control so I can blend in my uh, original clean signal. Now, you'll see this on quite a few bass overdrives. The, the dark glass series of overdrives are very good about always having a blend knob so you can at least get some of that full, rich bass tone that you've worked so hard to acquire back into your overdriven signal. There are a lot of great bass overdrives out there. One of these days, we'll go through and put together a board full of bass overdrives. But today, I wanted to focus on out of left field, maybe kind of uh, get you to take a look at some pedals that you wouldn't normally take a look at for your playing uh, and your bass style. When do I use overdrive? Well, I would use it all the time if I thought I could get away with it, but I am a gigging sideman uh, and I play anything from blues to country to classic rock. Uh, to hard rock, I'm really into punk rock. The first time I ever heard a uh, distorted bass signal, I'm pr fairly sure was on Black Sabbath recordings, and that was just simply amp overdrive. They were nailing the front of a Neve console, I'm sure, and overdriving the preamp, and that's that thick, rich, gorgeous Geezer Butler bass tone that we all love. Uh, the first time I heard it in person, I was 15 years old uh, and got to see Motorhead perform live with some, some buddies who uh, snuck me out of the house, much to my parents' chagrin. Uh, and I remember being overwhelmed with how good it sounded. Uh, I had just started playing and I wanted to sound like that. Couldn't really find that tone then, because this has been 30 years ago. Uh, but now there are so many options. Let's go through a few. I, Larry and I went through our pedal display and just kind of picked out some random ones, including my favorite and uh, the overdrive that I have on my board um, all the time now. So let's start off with the MXR FOD 
not really sure what FOD stands for. I'm sure there's plenty of videos out there, uh, guitar related specifically about this pedal. Uh, but I picked it out because it had a blend knob. Unfortunately, it is a blend knob between two different style of amplifier uh, overdrive. It doesn't mean it sounds bad or doesn't mean you can't make it work. It just doesn't have quite the feature set that I'm going to show you in some of the other pedals. But I think it's worth taking a listen. I'm going to start off uh, all of these demos with everything straight up, level, drive, tone, um, and whatever auxiliary knobs uh, that may be on these overdrives. I'm going to have them straight up. So here is the MXR FOD. I do have it on the mid scoop setting on, on here. I tried it on the flat setting and on the mid boosted setting and it washed things out a little bit. We're gonna mess around a little bit with the gain and the blend on this particular one. I'm gonna turn the gain up to about two o'clock. I'm gonna roll the blend back. I believe that this is a, a Marshall style uh, overdrive on this side. So let's take a listen. Let's turn that blend around the other direction, taking it to about three o'clock, and we're gonna leave the gain set at about two o'clock. This is uh, emulating a, uh, a higher gain, mid-scooped amplifier. So think uh, like dual, triple rex, uh, modern American high gain amplifier. So here it is. That sounds really, really great. I'm gonna try that with the tone rolled down just a little bit. I think it's a little bit sizzly in the top end. Let's roll that back to about 10, 10 o'clock, see what it sounds like. That's very usable, very, very usable. So that's the MXR FOD. Again, designed for guitar. Uh, probably This is probably the only bass video out there uh, featuring this overdrive. Go out there, explore these overdrives. Here is the Wampler Tumnus Deluxe. So we all know that this is a, kind of a clone clone. Um, I have to tell this story because this happened to me recently. Uh, ZZ Top was in our town, and on a Thursday afternoon, uh, the Reverend uh, Willie G, Billy Gibbons himself, walked through our doors. I got to spend about an hour and 20 minutes with him, uh, hanging out, being the guitar nerds that we are. It was a wonderful situation, but he actually purchased one of these. So if it's good enough for Reverend Willie G, it's good enough for you and your bass guitar. So there. All right, let's check it out. Again, everything's set up flat. I've got it on the normal setting. It does have a hot setting. This particular uh, pedal features bass, mid, and treble control along with level and gain. I've got everything set straight up. So here we go. <laughs> All right, 
that doesn't sound too bad. Uh, a much lighter overdrive than, than what came out of the MXR FOD. So uh, I'm going to do a few things based on my observations and, and what I'm hearing. I'm gonna crank the gain up. I'm gonna take it all the way up to about three o'clock. I'm gonna base the boost of the base, base the boost. I'm gonna boost the base and base the boost. Uh, I'm gonna send it to about two o'clock. I'm gonna roll a little bit of the mids and a little bit of the treble off, just going to about 11 o'clock. Let's see how that sounds. That's really nice. I can see that working with a, a lot of classic rock, um, you know, making making things just a little bit hairier uh, with your bass tone. And it seems like the, the bass control really works well on this. Let's crank the bass all the way up and see. I just put it in ludicrous mode. <laughs> I like that. Larry's probably not gonna like editing that because I'm sure it just spiked every level he's got. But that's okay, we'll let him deal. He's a professional. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next we have the JHS Moonshine. Uh, I picked this out. Uh, there are several JHS overdrives that I've tried out that work extremely well on bass. Um, the, the kilt being one of them, uh, gnarly, gnarly, wonderful sounding uh, overdrive slash distortion for uh, guitar that sounds really great on bass. The reason why I picked this one out is because it does have uh, the ability to blend in your clean signal. Uh, so this has a plus and minus mode. Of course, more overdrive, less overdrive. Here's everything straight up on the plus mode. Sounds good, sounds good. Let's add a little bit more drive. I'm gonna roll the tone back just a little bit. Try to get some of that sizzle out of there. Uh, some of you may like that. Like that. Never really been my thing, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna roll the clean tone back to about nine o'clock and the drive up to about two o'clock and we'll give it a whirl. That sounds great, that sounds great. Okay, now I'm gonna bring the clean tone way up. I'm probably gonna have to kick the volume down a little bit so Larry doesn't kick me in the shins after this video. I'm gonna leave the drive right where it was. Very nice, very usable so far. We can find sounds that work inside of all of these. 
Next up, the pedal that started my quest, the Earthquaker Westwood. I had uh, just read up on this for a presentation with the rest of the staff and uh, was looking at this. This is one of my favorite overdrives for uh, guitar, and now it's also one of my favorite overdrives for bass. Um, it is transparent. You still get your tone. Uh, really simple controls, level and drive on the top row, uh, bass and treble. And what I love about this pedal is where this bass frequency is set. The treble is set at like two ki kilohertz. Um, sometimes I'll knock that back to, to get a little bit of raspiness and, and sizzle out of, the, out of the tone. But the bass is set right at 80 hertz. And that's a sweet spot if you, uh, we know an A is 440, it's also 220, it's also 110. So around 80 hertz is these lowest frequencies here. So I'm just gonna play through it, everything straight up, and you can take a listen to it. Sounds so good, sounds so good. Okay, this is where I usually have mine set. I, I like a little bit more gnash and gnarl, so uh, I'm gonna set the drive up at about uh, two o'clock, and I'm gonna push the, the bass between two and three o'clock, and I think you'll hear how it responds just like this. <laughs> Honestly, this particular pedal is like the ketchup of my pedal board. I would put it on everything if I could. Um, unfortunately, I like to work quite a bit as a bassist, so I don't, but man, do I love it. In fact, I think I'm gonna name mine ketchup. You can name yours what you want, but that's where I'm headed. Uh, really, really terrific pedal, easy to set up, easy to get great sounds out of, uh, and a usable overdrive for bass. Next up, we've got the Friedman BEOD. So this is a, a little bit higher gain. Um, this is an impressive pedal. It has lots of controls. On the top row, it has bass, treble, and a presence knob. On the uh, bottom row of knobs is volume, gain, and a tight control, uh, which really does a, a good job at tightening up or loosening that overdrive. Uh, so let's have a listen, shall we? I can already tell that's gonna be loud. I'm gonna roll that back. Larry sharpening knives back there. <laughs> That's really cool, especially considering out of the box, everything set straight up and wham, instant nastiness. And I mean nasty like, you know, in a good way. Uh, Miss Jackson nasty. <laughs> All right, let's roll the bass up a little bit 
Uh, again, my delicate lawyers are uh, sensing a little bit too much high end. So I'm gonna roll the presence back a little bit, roll the, the treble back, both of those to about t uh, 10 o'clock. I'm gonna go ahead and roll the bass up to about two o'clock. Um, because I'm a glutton for punishment, I'm gonna add a little bit more gain. And because uh, you can't have too much gain. And it's at, set at about two o'clock and the tight control set at about two o'clock also. So here we go. <laughs> but I'm into stuff like that. Hey, thanks for uh, visiting with us. Thanks for hanging out. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, we enjoy doing these. It's because of people like you that we get to do something we love. You can check all these pedals out at moreguitars.com or find them at More Music in Evansville, Indiana. Until next time, see ya. <laughs>